Father, once again, we want to pause and give you thanks. Pause and recognize who indeed we're talking to right now. Who indeed we are worshiping. The one true God. The one king of the universe. The one who created us for fellowship with you. A love relationship with you. And today as we set aside this time, we simply want to get to know you better. To love you more. To look more like you as we leave. That we might represent you in our community and around the world. That you might live your life through us. As I see the world and what is going down as a result of rejecting you, it's tragic. But the beauty of it is we have the answer. We have the answer. So once again, remove me out of the way, I pray. Send God the Holy Spirit that he might be our teacher, our comforter, our exhorter. I pray for the person in here that has a tainted view of who you are. They understand who you are a little bit better today. I pray for the person who's never understood your scripture, that you, Holy Spirit, would illuminate these pages to them today. May I decrease and may you increase. And may you continue to do your thing here in our community and around the world. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I had a dream that one day people in Omaha and around the world will truly get to know who God really is. I have a dream that one day Christians will get back to simply studying their Bibles every day. I have a dream that one day Christians would live out their walk practically by loving and serving others. I have a dream that one day people right here at Calvary Chapel would finally receive God's unconditional grace and forgiveness and love and move past their past. I have a dream that one day people like you and I will begin to seek the Savior and not status. I have a dream that one day marriages will be restored and blessed and addictions will be conquered and wiped out. I have a dream that one day children will both be loved and disciplined with balance and consistency. I have a dream that one day our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be glorified in and through us here at Calvary Chapel. Now just so you guys know, I'm no Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I respect that man and I praise God for him making Dr. King, and what he stood for. I reviewed that great speech, and it brought chills into my system. And I saw that God placed in him that dream. And today, I get to see the fruition of that dream. I've lived it. As many of my best friends are African American, and I have a great fellowship with them and has revolutionized this world. I've been given the dream as well, in a different case, but I truly believe it's, it's a God-given dream. Now again, I'm not anything special, I'm just someone who has been given a dream in my heart. A couple weeks ago I told you how this dream started happening and how it came into fruition. Last week we talked about the DNA that he's placed in 
our hearts to see this dream occur. And now today we see how we believe God wants us to practically live out this dream. And it can be summed up in three words, three phrases, three things that we will do as a church. And that's doing church, outreach, and small groups. I believe that's important for every dream, every vi any vision, any uh, business, any organization to make clear what their vision is and how they feel God's calling them to accomplish it. The Bible says clearly that without vision, the people perish. In fact, it goes on to say in the book of Habakkuk, verse 2 of chapter 2, God tells him to write the vision down and make it plain on tablets, or a word document in our case, that he may run who reads it. I love it. Make it plain. Keep it simple. Stupid. The KISS principle. Like I said, there's a million things that we can do as a church, and they're all great things, church. But I have a fear if we try to do all things for all people and do everything really good, that we do everything average. Instead of shooting with a shotgun, I want to be shooting with a rifle and have God use us very effectively. It says make it plain, and then it says that we may run. Man, I want to see us all running stride for stride together, locking arms. Boom, it's kind of like Finding Nemo. You remember at the end when they were caught in that, uh, that net, right? And all these guys were freaking out, oh, 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 and they're all going different directions. And then little, little Holmes, you know, was like, dude, if we can just all go the same way, we'll bust right out of this joint. Listen, that's my heart. And that's why we do do the vision once a year. That's why the importance of it. So you are afforded the opportunity to say, yes, I'm in. I'm locking your arm. I'm locking the other person's arm. We're going for it. Or, no, I'm not called to this ministry. It's great, dude, but I'm not feeling that. I want an event, more events, and I want more of this. That's cool, but that's not what God's called us to. In 2004, I was part of a team in Carolina. We had this great coach, and he sat us, the whole team, down before the season started. He said this. He said, hey, listen, man, this is what, this is how we're going to play football. It's going to be like this, this, and this. <clears throat> he made it very simple for all the players. They knew what to expect. We're going, to have a, uh, we're going to have a passing attack and a running attack. It's going to be balanced. So you guys that, that want to go pass and do just pass all the time, this might not be the right fit for you. On the same token, if you just want to run the ball and that's all you want to do, this might not be the right place. And he said this, and this was, this was awesome. He said, if that's not what you've been called to, let me know and I'll find a team for you. I found that interesting. But I thought it very powerful. For a team to be successful, we all got to be on the same page. That is my prayer. So as we continue, again, praying through what God has called us to, how to practically implement the vision, the dream, the desire in our heart, what moves us every day, once again, it came down to three words. Church, outreach, small group. Simplicity is what he kept on drilling us with. So number one, let's go for it. Let's start with church. What does church mean here at Calvary Chapel? Turn to Psalm 100, if you can, please. Church service here starts with what? Worship, right? The term worship is actually, it comes from an old English word, worship, where we are, where God is worth it. We are coming to worship him in the Bible, there's two words that are translated worship. One, in the Old Testament scriptures, in Hebrew, it's shaka, shaka, And it basically means to bow down. I'm bowing down before God. I'm coming to Calvary Chapel, not to, to come, you know, it's great we see each other or anything, but I'm coming to bow down before the great God and worship Him in spirit and truth. In the New Testament, you'll see the word uh, for worship. It's translated here. It's the word proskuneo. Proskuneo.